Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Venus and today I am doing a book haul. So these are the books that I have hauled from March, April and some books that I've received in May. They were new releases that I received already and some of them are library books. Most of them are from Barnes and Noble and Amazon though. So it is a mix of genres. I have a couple nonfiction. I have a couple middle grade. There are fantasy, thrillers, horror. I think there's an adult fiction book in here somewhere. It's just, it's all the things. I'm going to try to group them by genre so you can skip ahead if you're not interested in certain genres. And of course there's over 30 books so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on what they're about because honestly some of them I don't know too much about I just know that I want to read them so let's get started so I'm going to start with the two nonfiction books these are astrophysics books the first one is astrophysics for people in a hurry and the second one is letters from an astrophysicist and both of these are by Neil deGrasse Tyson who is an astrophysicist I love space, love learning about it, so to try to get back into reading nonfiction books, I decided to choose books in a subject that I enjoy. I've read a lot of like leadership books and self-growth, self-help books that have burnt me out, and I have no desire to read any more of them. They all basically say the same exact thing, so I am excited to jump into these, and this one, this first one, Astrophysics for People in a Hurry is actually on my May TBR, so I will be reading this this month. And this one I really liked. It's like the companion to the first book, but people have written letters to the author and he responds to them about certain things about space and astrophysics. So I'm really excited to read these two. These are the only two nonfiction books on my call. So we're going to jump into romance and the first three that I have all by the same author. These are historical romance books that I thrifted and they're by Bertree Small. So the first one is Sky O'Malley. This is part of a series. Sky O'Malley, I think the second one in the series is a time, what is this? I can't even see it. So A Love for All Time and All the Sweet Tomorrows. Yeah. All the Sweet Tomorrow. So this is a series. I really loved historical romance. It was kind of the one of the first genres that I fell in love with. I haven't read any in a couple months. I've been reading more of the newer authors like Tessa Dare and I can't think of anyone else right now. But um, some of my favorites, Bertree Small was my favorite r historical romance author. So I'm excited to reread these. Hopefully I love them as much as I did many, many years ago. But we will see. And Sky O'Malley is actually on my May TBR. So I'll be jumping into that soon. These next two are kind of a Instagram or Bookstagram made me do it. <laughs> um, bye. And the first one is The Fine Print, and both of these are, I guess, part of a series. Uh, first one is Fine Print by Lauren Asher, and the second one is Terms and Conditions, and they are part of the Dreamland Billionaires series. All I know about this, I think the first one is like a grumpy sunshine trope, which I absolutely love when done well. And there's also an interracial couple in this too, which I love to see. And I have kind of recently been hearing mixed reviews about it, but that's okay. I'm still going to read them and see what I think. But I am super excited to read these. These are like, so this these books have like different covers. I think original covers have like humans on the front of it. I'll post pictures up if I can find them. But I actually really, really love these. I believe the main character in this first book is the CEO of a place that's very similar to Disneyland. And he's grumpy. <laughs> but that's all I know and I look forward to reading these. And the next romance book is A Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. This recently came out I believe in April. I did just finish it and I loved it so much. This book centers around Alexis. She is an emergency room doctor and Daniel who is like a small town carpenter. They're basically total opposites. Alexis is also from a family of very world-renowned surgeons, and she is expected to continue on with that legacy, so dating a carpenter to her family is beneath her. So this story unfolds, 
Daniel is so sweet. I loved his character so much and I actually highly recommend this book and it was it was fantastic. I loved it. The next book is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. This just came out on May 3rd and I've read it already and I loved it as well. And this book is about Nora. She is like a cutthroat literary agent who loves living in New York City and her sister asks her to go stay in a small town in North Carolina for a month. Her sister is pregnant with her third child. She wants a little bit of a break before the new baby comes and makes them a family of five. So they go to this small town and Nora keeps running into Charlie who is an editor who also lives in New York City. And the whole point of this trip also for Nora is that her sister really wanted her to kind of meet like some, they have like this list of things that they want to do like ride a horse and wear flannel and Nora's sister Libby really wants Nora to meet like a small town guy and fall in love and she of course keeps running into Charlie who is from the city and this book was fantastic and that's all I'm gonna say but yeah this is another romance I hold. The next two books are middle grade books. The first one is Banicula and this is by De Deborah and James Howe. This is just kind of a nostalgic read that I picked up at Barnes & Noble. This was one of my favorite books when I was younger. It's about Banicula and you just never know is he or isn't he a vampire? He certainly loves to suck the juice from vegetables, but this is a super cute book. So I picked this one up. And then I got the third book in the Nevermore series, Hollow Pox. I love the first two books, Nevermore and Wondersmith, and I can't wait to continue on with this. This is a middle grade fantasy book that centers around Morgan Crow, who is like a cursed child, and she is whisked away to Nevermore, which is a magical city, and all kinds of fun things happen. She's got a group of friends that are just hilarious and the hotel that she lives in with Juniper Jones who is one of the main characters is also it's just it's just fun times so I picked this one up too. The next group of books I'm going to talk about are thrillers and the first one this is a library book Night Shift by Alex Finlay. This just came out not too long ago I, th I want to say maybe March but this centers around murders that happened at a blockbuster in the 90s. Don't let that fool you though because it literally only lasts for about five minutes the 90s nostalgia and then it jumps into current time so i did read this book i gave it three stars i talked about it in my april wrap up but yeah these next two books i picked up at a at the goodwill for like 50 cents and a dollar um but it's uh both are by michael Connolly. this first one is the night fire and the second one is a darkness more than night both of these, I believe, are part of the Bosch series. These are like crime thriller books. I love Michael Connelly's writing style. He used to be, I think, a crime reporter before he became an author, and all of his books just are just so good. There's a lot of good detail behind the scenes, either with the lawyers or the reporters or the detectives. He just does such a phenomenal job in these um, crime crime thrillers. And I believe, or he does, he has a series based on Bosch, the character who is a detective. So I picked these up for super cheap. Thank you, Goodwill. And the next th thriller is The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. This was a my book of the month picks, I think, from March. I don't know too much about this. It just says, meet the residents of number 12, Rue, oh geez, <laughs> Rue de Amants, a beautiful old apartment building in the City of Light. And then it says, everyone's a neighbor, everyone's a suspect, and everyone knows something they're not telling. I have seen mixed reviews about this, but I also saw mixed reviews about her, I think it was The Guest House, which I actually really enjoyed. So I'm hoping that that is the case for this one as well. And you know, the other book that I got for a book of the month back in March was The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. I think this is a, a mystery thriller. This is going to actually be the first book that I read by her. I don't know too much about it. It says, Some crimes come back to haunt you. A true crime blogger gets more than she bargained for while interviewing a woman acquitted of two cold case slayings in this chilling new novel from the best-selling author of The Sundown Motel. I have heard really good reviews about this book. I am super excited to finally read a book by this author because I've heard wonderful things about her. And then the last book that I got for Book of the Month back in March is The Unsinkable Greta James. This is an adult fiction book, I believe, and I picked it up because it's about a musician who goes, I think, on a cruise 
to try to patch up the relationship with her father. And I love books about musicians for some reason. This one says, An indie musician reeling from tragedy and a public breakdown reconnects with her father on a week-long cruise in this pitch-perfect story about the ways we recover love in the strangest of places. So that just sounded like... Mm. So, like, heartwarming. Might be a tearjerker. I don't know, but I'm looking forward to reading this one. And the next section, this is the horror books that I've um, purchased or got from the library. This first one I did get from the library, The Haunting of Ashburn Hill by Darcy Coates. I keep seeing this author's name everywhere, and I just decided that I really wanted to start reading her books. And I have always see really good reviews about her books. And I don't know too much about this one. I think this one might be Gabby um, from Gabby Reed's upcoming book club pick soon, I think. But it just says there's something wrong with Ashburn House. Everyone knows about Ashburn House. They whisper that its old owner went mad and restless ghosts still walk the halls. But when Adrian, desperate and in need of a place to stay, inherits the crumbling old mansion, she only sees it as a lifeline until darkness falls. That sounds creepy as hell. And the cover is super creepy. <laughs> and then the second book that I actually purchased because of this cover, this was a cover by, <laughs> um, but this is also by Darcy Coates and it's called The Carol Hunt. And this one says, the dead are restless here. Remy is a tour guide for the notoriously haunted Carol house. When she's asked to host ghosts for a week long stay, host ghosts, when she's asked to host guests for a week long stay in order to research Carol's phenomena, she hopes to finally experience some of the sightings that made the house famous. So that looks creepy as hell too. I can't wait to read these two books. Now the next book I got from Barnes & Noble is called Dead Silence by S.A. Barnes. All I know is this is a ghost ship in space and it talks about being um, scary as Alien, which is one of my favorite sci-fi movies. And I don't want to even open up the inside to learn any more about this, but I have heard so many good reviews about it. They say it's super scary, takes place in space, in a ghost ship. I mean, that just it has all the things that sound like I'm going to love, so I can't wait to read this one. These next two books I thrifted by Stephen King. They were both books that I read a very long time ago, probably over a decade ago. When did this book come out? 2002. So this one is From a Buick 8 by Stephen King. I just remember really, really loving this book. This was kind of like when I was on like the Stephen King kick many years ago and I love this book. So I didn't have a copy of it. I believe I borrowed it from the library um, back in the day. So I really wanted a copy of it and I plan to reread it. I honestly cannot remember what it's about at all. It just has to do with a car. It's not like Christine, but I can't wait to read this again. I just remember having, I think this book scared me actually, uh, but we'll see. I will probably talk about it in a vlog at some point, but yep, I love this book. I love the cover. And then another one of my favorite Stephen King books is Dreamcatcher. This book was adapted to a movie and I think I, it's been so long since I read this too. I know this is about a group of friends that go to stay or vacation in like some cabin up in the, I don't know, somewhere snowy, I think. And then there's like aliens or something that happens in this book. And then there's one of their friends, his name is Dudley. I'm just gonna read the inside cover. Cause, yeah, cause I've already read this book. I just don't really remember it that much. But once upon a time in the haunted city of Derry, site of the classics It and Insomnia, four boys stood together and did a brave thing, certainly a good thing, perhaps even a great thing, something that changed them in ways they could never begin to understand. 25 years later, the boys are now men with separate lives and separate troubles, but the ties endure. Each hunting season, for this foursome reunites in the woods of Maine. This year, a stranger stumbles into their camp, disoriented, mumbling something about lights in the sky. His incoherent ravings proved to be disturbingly prescient. Prescient? I don't know that word. Before long, these men will be plunged into a horrifying struggle with a creature from another world. Yes, this book. I just remember loving this book so much. So I can't wait to reread this one and probably watch the movie again afterwards because it has Donnie Wahlberg in it and I'm a dork and used to be a New Kids on the Block fan. Well, still am, but yeah, so I will probably rewatch the movie too. 
The last uh, horror thriller book on my haul is Sundial by Catriona Ward. She is the author of The Last House on Needless Street, which is a book that I absolutely loved last year. It was part of my top 10 reads of last year. This one, not quite so much. I didn't enjoy it. I think I gave it like three stars. It was just okay for me. It's about Rob, a woman who has two children and a jerk husband, and her daughter Callie starts doing some disturbing things, and she decides to take Callie back to Sundial, where she was raised, and a whole bunch of weird stuff happened. It's kind of a split timeline. It goes back and forth from when Rob was younger to current time, and it was just okay. There was a couple twists in it. There is some trigger warnings for animal cruelty, so please make sure you check that out if you decide to read this. But it was okay. I think a lot of people did enjoy it. Um, I think it has pretty good reviews, but for me it was a little underwhelming. So the last section of this haul are my fantasy books. This one I got from the library. This is American Gods by Neil Gaiman. This was on a table in my library where librarians recommend books, and I keep seeing Neil Gaiman, but I've never read any books by him. I think this is also like a movie or a show. I'm not sure. I don't know really anything about this book. Some of the blurbs say, pointed, occasionally comic, often scary, consistently moving and provocative. American Gods is strewn with secrets and magical visions. That's USA Today and Washington Post says, mystery, satire, sex, horror, poetic prose. American God uses all these to keep the reader turning the pages. So I, I don't know. Oh, it's a series on stars because it says it right there. But yeah, I don't know anything else about it. It's pretty chunky. Oh, not too bad. It just has really small print, but. Uh, another library book that I have is Shore Fall by Robert Jackson Bennett. I just finished the first book in this trilogy called Foundry Side uh, a couple months ago, I think, and it was, it was okay for me. The author just spent a lot of time going into detail about the magic system in this book, but I did otherwise really enjoy the story, and I do have an arc for the third book in this series, so I am going to try to get to that as soon as I can uh, because it comes out next month. So uh, this book is about scribing, basically taking objects and um, scribing like ruins on them to make them do things that they wouldn't normally do, which is a super cool concept. Again, he just spends way too much time talking about it, but I did love the characters in this book. I do like his writing style. I'm hoping that it gets better, but unfortunately I have heard recently from quite a few people um, that the second book isn't much better so that I don't that makes me sad because this is this is just a big book so maybe I'll listen to this one on audiobook if I can get it but yeah so I got this from the library so this next one is called Promise of Blood by Brian McClellan and this one was actually also on that table recommended by Jake from my library <laughs> and <laughs> I have seen this cover um, and this book reviewed quite a few places and I heard really good things about it so I am excited to read it. I do love this cover. I don't know anything about it. So on the back, Brent Weeks, uh, who wrote Lightbringer series, I'm pretty sure, says Promise of Blood is a hugely promising debut. Guns, swords, and magic together. What more could you want? How about tense action, memorable characters, rising stakes, and cool, cool magic. So I can't wait to read this one. This one I picked up at Barnes & Noble, and this is called The Justice of Kings. I'm pretty sure this just came out recently. I have seen quite a few good reviews about this, too. This is, was also a cover by because I love this cover. But I don't know anything about it, I'll be honest. Um, yep, don't know anything about it. It says, the empire of the wolf simmers with unrest. Rebels, heretics, and powerful patricians all challenge the power of the imperial throne. Only the order of justices stands in the way of chaos. Sir Conrad von Vault is the most feared justice of all. Upholding the law by way of his sharp mind, arcane powers, and skill as a swordsman. At his side stands Helena... Sedanka, his talented protege, orphaned by the wars that forged the empire. That's all I know. But it looks good, it sounds good, it's got good reviews, so I can't wait to read this one. And this one, I am so excited that Brandon Sanderson put these three novellas in this collection. 
I have not read them yet and I need to get to them before I read Cytonic, but it's a collection of short stories, Sunreach, Re Sunreach Redawn, and Evershore. And this is part of the Skyward series, which is a young adult sci-fi series by Brandon Sanderson that I absolutely love. I've read the first two books. The third one, Cytonic, came out, uh, I don't remember when it came out. I think November maybe. But there's these three novellas that you should read before starting that, I've been told. So I was so excited when I saw this that it was in a bound up because you can get these on ebook, but I'm I like to have the the actual hard copy, so can't wait to jump into these. And even for novellas, this book is massive. <laughs> Gosh, it's over 600 pages, so Thanks, Brandon. And I did read An Arc of the Hunger of the Gods by John Gwen, but I had to have a physical copy of it. I loved it. I have a reading vlog for that I will post up, but this is Norse-inspired uh, fantasy, high fantasy book, and it was fantastic. And can we take a second to appreciate this gorgeous cover? It's beautiful. So, yep, had to have the physical copy of this one on my shelves. And the last two books are both by um, Michael J. Sullivan. So they're first books in two of his series. This one is The Age of Myth. And this one, this one I think has multiple, multiple books in it. But this one is, yeah, volume one of the Ryeria Revelations, Theft of Swords. I am really excited to read books by him. I keep, again, seeing him all over the place. Such high, high praise for his writing. And I think they're set in the same world, but many, many centuries maybe um, apart, I think. But I grabbed the first one in both of these series, so I can't wait to read them. I don't know anything about it. Don't know. This one, so this one says, they killed the king, they pinned it on two men, they chose poorly. And a little blurb says, high raising escapes, flashy sword fights, and faithful friendship complete with the formula for good old-fashioned escapist fun. Yeah, so I don't know too much about these, but I know I'm gonna love them because some of my absolute favorite reviewers have given these very high reviews and they have not steered me wrong except for the Wheel of Time. So, <laughs> but other than that, I've been very much, um, very much liked most of the series that I've, you know, yeah, I don't know what I'm saying. So that is my March, April, and beginning of May book haul. I am excited to dig into these and throw them on my shelves because I did do an unhaul not too long ago. You can check out that video as well in the cards. But thank you guys, as always, for hanging out with me. I truly appreciate the time we spend together, and I can't wait to see you again soon. See ya!